Today we're going to be talking about the Zoetech 4K HDMI encoder decoder and I'm going to be using it in one particular scenario where I'm going to be taking my 4K camera signal that you're looking at right now and sending it via NDI over my network. But first off, let's take a quick look at all the ports and all the configuration that you can use with this device. So let's talk about what we get in the box. You get the unit, of course, which is very small, a power supply brick, which has USB-C and USB-C to USB-C cable as well. You also get a cold shoe mount that fits on the bottom here so you can attach that to the camera. Let's take a look at the ports. You have this side of the box is all your inputs and this side of the box is all your outputs. You also have an LCD screen on here and a tally light in the back to show you when it's actually operating. Let's just take a quick look at the ports. You have HDMI in, 12 volt DC out, which is for powering your camera. Then you've got your ethernet port, which supports power over ethernet. This is where all the magic happens to connect to your network and power input, which is your USB-C ports. And you can see them here at the top. If we turn it over, these are all your outputs. So you've got headphone audio monitoring on this side. You've got a line out. You've also got the ability to connect a USB stick so you can actually do some recording on here. And then you've got your pass through connector, which is your HDMI out. So you can see it's pretty configurable in terms of what you can connect to it. But in this particular scenario for this video, I'm just going to be using it in NDI mode, which means I'm going to be sending the signal that you're looking at right now in this camera, which is at 4K 24 frames per second. And I'm going to use the encoder to send that signal out via the network using NDI. So let's get it set up first of all. There's a couple of ways that you can connect this to your network. You can use Wi-Fi or Ethernet. In my particular case, I've got it connected via Ethernet. It's using DHCP, which means it's just going to grab an IP address that's free on my network. If you want to know what that IP address is that it's using, it's right here on the display. And then you just basically put the IP address into your browser and log in with the very safe credentials of admin admin. It doesn't really matter for now. Once you log in, you'll just get a preview of what the signal is coming into the device. Now, don't worry, the delay or latency that you're seeing here is just because I'm actually screen sharing my setup here. But let's go into settings. The first menu that you'll see is the dashboard, which just gives you a view of the health of the device and some basic overall settings. You can see the memory and CPU here. Uh, the fan is on in silent mode and it's running at 110 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment. So it's quite warm. There is a little fan running. It's not very loud, but you can hear it. So don't have it too close to your microphones, but it's perfectly fine. The middle view is the network parameters. And then we're gonna look in a little bit more detail on the encoder. You've got the ability to stream two stream settings here from this device. You can see that we've got the main stream and the secondary stream. One is set to 4K resolution, which is what I've got the camera set to at the moment at 24 frames per second. The other one is at 640 by 360. You've also got some other streaming options using RTSP and SRT. And this device will actually even stream to the interwebs using RTMP or your YouTube channel. And I'll show you where that setting is at the moment. The tally light is really just to show you the light here on the back. So it's enabled once it's gone live. Let's get into the meat. So the input side under video is where you will see the input signal. The resolution is what's coming in from my camera, which is at 4K. You can actually hard code the resolution as well to 4K 30 or 25 frames per second. In my particular case, I don't need that. And then you can obviously flip the camera around as well. So you can do a few things. The encoder is where you're actually taking the signal from your camera and then using the internal encoder to compress that and then send it via whatever method we're configuring, in this case, NDI. And as I mentioned, there's two streams. First stream is the main stream and the one is the secondary one. Um, for the main purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna be using the main stream. So the codec I'm gonna be setting this to is H.264, although it does support H.265 as well. The profiles, I'm not 100% sure what these are for. If you look in the manual, it just says the default is BP. I don't know what they are. Let me know in the comments if you do. I looked in the manual, I couldn't find any explanation of what they are, but I've just set mine to BP and it seems to work fine. Resolution wise, I've set this to 4K, but you can actually wind this resolution down. So if you want to take a 4K signal and just send a 1080p one, 
you can do that in this drop down menu here. And then obviously you can change the bit rate. It goes up to, uh, oh, what does it go up to? Five. 512,000 kilobits per second. I've just set mine to 12 megabits per second for now. It seems to work fine. And again, depending on the strength of your network in terms of bandwidth and um, contention on the network, then you may need to just tweak the bandwidth settings to get, or the bitrate settings to get the best out of your network. But I'm just going to leave mine for now at this. Frame rate is 24, and then the iframe interval is set to there. So I can save this. If I want to, it'll just chug away and save that in the background. The next thing is the output. So we just want to check the output format, which is the pass through in this case. So you can see that I've got this loop out enabled, which means the 4K signal from the, this side is going to go into the output side. So I'm just basically passing it through and then recording this using my capture card. And then that's going into uh, Ecamm Live, which is what you're looking at right now. On screen display means that once this is enabled, I can toggle my live video and you can see that live video is running and then I can add text, some graphics and overlays and things like that. But I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. So I'm just going to turn off the live video itself. Let's just go into the streaming side. So we've got local streaming, which is RTSP and SRT. Those are enabled by default. Live, I mentioned earlier that you could actually add a destination so you can use an a URL and stream key so via RTMP so you could stream to Instagram for example or something like that. In the drop down menu here you've also got the ability to connect and set up YouTube so you can stream directly from this device to your YouTube channel which is pretty cool. In the recording menu down here you've got the ability to record locally on the device via an SD card if you want to plug that in or there's a USB stick that you can plug into here on this USB A port as well. Now the meat that we're interested in is the NDI piece where I'm taking this 4K signal and wirelessly or over the network sending my video signal out via NDI. So let's enable it. It's on by now. Um, the quality is depending on what basic protocol you're setting for NDI. In my case, I'm going to set it to HX3. It's got decent compression and good quality, so I'm going to leave it at that. The name of the device is what's going to appear in your software that's going to receive the NDI signal. In my case, I'm using Ecamm Live. I'll show you that in a second. So it's just I'm just going to leave it as default, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, you can actually set this up in, into groups as well. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And you can do multicasting, but again, not going to bother. Let's hit save and it's modified the box, but I'm going to have to reboot the device in order for these changes to take effect. So don't get all this set up and then get ready to go live because then you're going to have to reboot it. So if you go to uh, this, the menu down here at the bottom under system, I'm going to restart it. And then once it's restarted, we'll come back. All right, the device has rebooted as you can see. So now let's log in with the ultra safe credentials, admin, admin. So we're back to the preview mode. Everything is enabled. So let's go into settings and you'll see down here that NDI has been enabled. And if I go to streaming and uh, streaming and NDI, we're just going to check that that is up and running. Now I'm going to take the signal that's been sent and bring that into Ecamm Live. So let's go to the side by side view. And you can see here right now that on the left is the signal coming from the camera through the Zowie Tech box in pass through mode and going into my HDMI capture card, which is the Decklink quad, as I mentioned. And on the right hand side is the actual image coming via NDI from the Zowie Tech box. So I'm sending my 4K signal wirelessly over the network. And as you can see, there's very little latency between the two. It's very good indeed. And I'll show you if I go to my Ecamm Live demo mode, I'll actually show you how this is set up. So let's go to live demo. You can see here on the left hand side that I've got my camera A and in this particular case, camera A is set to my Decklink Quad HDMI encoder. And then the right hand side, if I show you the drop down menu here, I'm actually using the Zowie Tech box, which obviously is the name that was given to the NDI output source. If I change that, it would obviously look at something else. So this is just showing you that this is the actual signal coming from the Zowie Tech box via my network over NDI. I think it looks pretty good. 
and it's a great addition to your production setup if you want to know you know use this to send this camera image to another device that is allowing to pick up HDMI or NDI setup sorry and then recording that you could do that so there's lots of different workflows with this device I could be live streaming at the same time this camera image as well so there's lots of configurable parameters within this encoder that you can use and I think it's it's great I'm going to be using it to send some other signals from maybe my cats downstairs into the network here and then I can show them from here so if you've got like different rooms in your studio or you want to actually have this NDI device sending out a signal from uh, from another camera in another place it's a very great way of doing that there's lots of other different workflows as I mentioned you can also take an NDI source from like an OBSBOT camera for example pop it into here and let that send the signal out you can connect a webcam via USB you can live stream from this device there's lots of different workflows in this little device that you can do. Um, I'll probably do a couple of more videos in the future on some of the different workflows. Let me know in the comments if you've got one of these devices or are you going to be using it, if you've got something similar and if you've got some use cases for NDI but it's a great workflow and yeah I think it performs really well and as you can see it's, it's really good. One thing I will uh, mention that I've actually noticed if I go to the side by side view there is a little bit of a color shift between the two images. The one on the left is obviously the pass through, the one on the right is the NDI. The NDI one is more true to how the camera is actually set up. And I think it just might be something to do with the way that the camera signal has been passed through the actual Zowie Tech box itself. So there is a little bit of color shift on that. If you've noticed, it's similar when you see your camera in Zoom. Zoom seems to have a little color cast, a color shift on the other software does that as well so it's just worth noting that you might see a little color change on here that's my experience anyway if you've got one of these devices and don't see any color shift let me know but i'd be interested to to see there is a little bit of a difference that i can see between them but you know it's not crazy and um, you can al always tweak that on the software that you're receiving the signal anyway so let me know in the comments what you think. If you like this device, if you're thinking about getting one, if you're playing around with NDI as well, and let me know in the comments if you do want me to go deeper into this device and show you some other workflows. Until then, see you next time.